Hi everyone. This video is going to be all about drawing and painting irises. And uh, you might notice the painting behind me is by Vincent Van Gogh. And he's actually going to be my featured artist today to talk about just for a couple minutes. Um, some of you at GIFT have already seen this painting. We've already talked about it a little bit. But uh, Vincent van Gogh lived in the 1800s and we're actually approaching his birthday. His birthday is March 30th. So um, students from Heritage, if you're watching this on Monday, March 30th, during your regular class time, today is his birthday. Um, but anyway, he is from, or he was from uh, the Netherlands. He was a Dutch artist, um, but he spent a lot of years in France painting. And um, most of you are probably familiar with his Starry Night painting, but he also did a lot of flowers. He loved the outdoors, um, he loved nature. And so this is his painting of irises. Um, just a fun little fact, <laughs> um, this was at one point um, a record breaker as far as um, the highest amount of, of uh, that was a painting was sold for. Back in 1987, this painting sold for over $53 million, which would be equivalent today to about $100 million. Um, and it's so interesting because if you know anything about Vincent van Gogh, you know that he lived basically in poverty. Uh, he only sold one painting his entire life. So all of the success and, and um, fame that he has today, he didn't know anything about. He died before any of that happened. So, um, but this is a, a beloved painting of the irises and you'll notice there's one white iris in the painting which is quite interesting anyway we're going to draw some irises together this lesson is geared towards um i'm going to say art three and art four of course anybody is welcome to join us um, but, uh, this is, this was really intended to be an art four project, although I did have a few students in art three, um, actually start an I iris drawing because they were ahead on all their projects. Um, at GIFT, I'm gearing this towards art studio and teen art studio. And again, some of you already started this. I know some of you already did your iris drawings in class. And um, some of you actually even started your paintings. Unfortunately, those canvases are at gift and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get back to those when we see each other again. Uh, I'm not sure who has painting supplies at home and who doesn't. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we get to the painting part. But for now, we're just gonna draw some irises. Okay, so we're gonna draw uh, some irises. Uh, if you are a younger student um, or a student who's fairly new to art and you just wanna do one iris, um, here's an example of a drawing I did of just one iris um, with a fun little background. Um, if you're a more experienced student, if you're an art four student, I'd like you to draw at least three irises in your drawing and uh, it would be nice to have them um, you know kind of leaning in different directions and not all necessarily straight up in a straight line um, all together just to give it a little more interest. Uh, first I'm going to show you how I would start using basic shapes. I saw someone do this um, years ago and I loved how they broke it down into such a simple simplified um, shape. Because when you look at an iris, in fact, I'm gonna show you some pictures of irises now. When you look at these photos of irises, they look like they might be really complicated to draw. Okay, so even though they look like a complicated flower and it might seem a little overwhelming 
to draw it at first, we can break it down into a very basic shape. And that basic shape is going to be an oval that's horizontal, so it's side to side, and a circle on top. Now, of course, you want to press very lightly with your pencil because you're going to want to erase some of these lines. If you're in Art Studio or Teen Art Studio or Art 3 or Art 4, by now you guys should know very well that uh, you don't want to press hard with your pencil. So now I'm going to, um, I'm going to make this bottom oval into three petals like this. I'm going to divide it into three petals. The first petal is going to be leaning to the left. The second one's going to be going right down the center in the middle and the right, the one on the right is going to be curving down, leaning to the right. Um, these petals are going to have a wavy edge to them. So I'm going to go a little bit, extend a little bit further past the oval and I'm giving it kind of a, a wavy edge. And here's my one in the middle and I'm just elongating them a little bit. So I'm going past the oval and here's the one on the right side. All right, so now that's done. In the center up here in the circle, I'm going to create, basically it's gonna be like a V shape like that, except for I want it to be, I want it to have a wavy edge and I'm gonna go past the circle a little bit. So here's kind of a wavy V and I went past the circle and now I'm gonna come back down again with kind of a wavy edge. All right, and then I can erase these lines in the middle of my petal. And now uh, I'm gonna end up erasing this line right here too. And I'm gonna create a petal that's showing on the other side. Now you can either keep this inside these two petals or you can make it go kind of outside those petals. It's up to you. Um, you could even put another one inside here if you want. And then there's a, a center part. I believe somebody told me it's called a stamen, but I'm not sure. But it's a long tubular piece that's going to be bright yellow. Let me show you my simple drawing of a iris here. See how it's bright yellow? Very pretty. Uh, of course, you saw in those photos, again, that irises can be um, different colors and look differently. So there's not just one type of iris. Anyway, that's our basic shape for the iris. And so now I'm going to erase these lines down here. I just love how it makes it so simple. It breaks it down. And um, it's, it's such an easy approach for a, what looks like a complicated flower. So I just need a stem. Remember our stems, we want to be very skinny. And then the leaves of the iris are very similar to like tulip leaves. Um, they're very, they're almost like spears, I would say. So they're very tall, sometimes they're even taller than the flower itself. And they're very, um, they're long, tall, almost like spears coming to a point at the top. Okay, so now when you, if you wanna practice that, I would suggest practicing that a few times. When you get good at it, <laughs> when you've practiced it a few times, you can probably start to draw it without having to do the oval and the circle. You'll get so familiar with that shape that you'll be able to do it without drawing, again, the oval and the circle, if that makes sense. Now, there's one iris. Since I'm gonna do three, I'm gonna draw one over here. And again, I've done this so many times that I can get the basic shape in without having to draw the oval and the circle. 
Now, you'll notice that I overlapped here, so I'm just gonna erase this line. Um, one thing I didn't mention about the Van Gogh painting is that every single iris in that painting is different. No two are alike. And of course, we know in, in nature, that's how it is. No two flowers would ever be exactly alike. So, um, you know, that's that's uh, kind of comforting as an artist to know that you don't have to put pressure on yourself to draw the iris exactly the same way every time. You can make each flower unique. And also, of course, not every iris is in this position and, and uh, the petals are not always, um, you know, in, the, in this um, laid out like this. So you can experiment with that. If you're able to look online for yourself at other pictures of irises, you can um, use those photos or you can use the photos that I included in this video as your reference pictures. Um, anyway, I'm gonna put another iris right here. And again, if you want it to overlap, you can just draw right on top of your previous flower like I did there. Or like here, I'm gonna stop when I get to that flower so I don't overlap it. Again, the lines are wavy. And then I'm gonna draw my stems and again, add some tall, kind of almost spear-like um, leaves. Oh, my pencil, there we go. Okay, so maybe, you know what, I'm gonna have this flower in front of this flower, so I'm gonna erase that line. All right, so there are my three irises, and now I'm going to start to add some color. Um, if you want to outline it with marker, like I did in this drawing, I outlined it with marker first, green on the green leaves, purple on the iris, and then, like I said, I did the, the little dots in the um, background just to give it a, um, a cute background. Um, but if you don't want to outline with marker and you just want to use colored pencil, I did want to show you one of my favorite brands of colored pencils. A lot of times students or parents will ask me, um, maybe they're wanting to buy colored pencils as a gift for their, for their uh, son or daughter. Or, um, artists just want to know, what, what do I like to use? Well, for the younger kids and the younger classes, I usually stick to the Crayola, but um, for the upper level classes, I do like to use a nicer brand of colored pencil, and I love this brand, Gold Faber, uh, Faber Castell, and um, so these are the ones that I'm going to be using, and what's really nice about these pencils is they don't break as easy as um, some of the less, less expensive <laughs> colored pencils do, uh, and they also blend so much nicer. Um, so uh, you'll really see a difference when uh, you start to use these, how much nicer they blend. Anyway, I'm gonna take some uh, purple and maybe some blue. And uh, I might even add some of this magenta pink color in my petals. And you could kind of outline those petals first if you want. And again, um, there is a little bit of white here that I'm gonna keep. So I'm kind of just outlining where that white's gonna be. I'm gonna leave that space white. Okay, so I'm just coloring in these petals and I'm not pressing hard right now, but when I get to the ends, I am gonna press a little harder. So I'm getting a deeper purple. 
And then I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. Now in Vincent Van Gogh's painting, his irises were a very bluish purple. And I'll show you, I started a painting that I didn't finish yet, but in this painting, you'll see how much blue I used in the iris. Um, but you can also add some pink if you'd like, some of that magenta pink. So, of course, we want to blend and use several different colors instead of just sticking with one color anytime we're doing our artwork. Unless it's meant to be just one color. But something from nature like this is going to have more than one color. All right, so I'm going to continue coloring. Um, I'll do the center using a, um, a bright yellow, like a golden yellow, and I'm going to put this on fast motion so you can see how I colored my irises. of you um, who are in either art studio or teen art studio or art three or art four are um, pretty experienced artists so um, I would love to see your finished drawings of your irises uh, when you're when you're all done you can email them to me you can send me a text um, I did start a closed uh, private Facebook group for all my art classes, uh, one for gift and one for heritage. And uh, you can also, if you're on Facebook or if your parents are on Facebook, um, perhaps you could post a picture of your finished drawing there as well. And then we can all see it and we can all enjoy your artwork. Uh, I wanted to talk for a few minutes about painting. Again, some of you might have painting supplies at home. Uh, some of you might not, if you don't, um, then hopefully it won't be too long before we can be together again and, and do some painting. If you do have painting supplies at home, that's, that's great. Um, I'm going to talk a few minutes about painting with acrylic paint. So if all you have at home is watercolor, um, that's obviously different than, um, acrylic paint. And I'm going to talk about painting with acrylics. Um, if you have acrylic paints at home, but maybe you don't have any canvas, Here's some things I can recommend to you. Um, perhaps painting on cardboard, uh, like a nice sturdy piece of cardboard, like even um, the type of cardboard that's on the back of your um, sketchbooks, something, something like this. Not that you wanna tear apart your sketchbook, but um, another suggestion, if you're really desperate and you want something to paint on, I mean, regular paper or paper in your sketchbook will kind of wrinkle and warp. It's not really, meant to be used for painting. Um, so uh, what I could suggest to you is if you have a, a cereal box that you're done with, um, you could actually cut apart the cardboard of the cereal box and use that to paint on. Um, I would recommend maybe using the, the more, um, not the shiny side, but the flat kind of cardboard side of, of the um, cereal box. Uh, just an idea on something you, you could paint on. Hopefully some of you though do have canvas. Um, this is on a flat canvas panel and um, it's not done yet. And uh, this one is obviously not done either. This is on a little stretched canvas. 
that I have. I know some of you started a painting with me and we were doing them on nice big canvases. Um, again, hopefully we'll be able to get back to those next time we're together. But um, I just thought I'd do a couple quick demonstrations of painting an iris. Um, this one, I, I'm just doing one single iris and I drew it out ahead of time and then I painted the background around the flower. Um, on this one, I approached it a different way. This one, I just painted the entire background first and I didn't draw anything out ahead of time. And now I'm just painting the irises freehand. I'm not drawing anything out. And so that's, I'm gonna demonstrate that to you just a little bit. Okay, so real quick, I wanted to show you the type of paint I'm using. I'm using Master's Touch um, acrylic that comes in the tube like this. Very inexpensive. I just got it at Hobby Lobby. Um, but whatever kind of paint you have at home, uh, if you if you only have uh, these type of acrylics, like the Apple Barrel or something, that's fine too. You know, we're going to work with whatever we, we have at home. And uh, so I just wanted to real quick show you on this one, I drew out um, the basic shape of my iris. I painted the background and then I did paint some white. And this is the picture I'm using as my inspiration. Um, I really loved this close up of an iris and I loved the, the like cobalt blue that's in here. So I was using that as my inspiration, as my reference. And so now what I would do is just um, go around the edges. And maybe come in a little bit like this towards the center of the petal. And remember, you want the, the edges of the petal to be kind of wavy and bumpy. So I'm going to put this on fast forward just for a little while. I, I won't complete the whole painting, but at least you can watch me for a few minutes. Okay, so obviously I did not finish that last painting, but hopefully that gave you a little um, feel for how I would approach it and how um, I would paint that big zoom in close up of one iris. Um, and again, that one I drew out ahead of time and then I was just filling in my drawing with, with the paint. Um, this approach is different. Like I said before, I just painted the entire background first and I'm not drawing anything out ahead of time. Yeah, I'm drawing or I'm going to be painting more free, free form. And um, this is the picture I used as my inspiration for this painting. Um, but I'm going to do more than one, obviously. So I just wanted to give you a just a quick idea of how I would approach this. Um, here's my palette that I'm using. If you don't have a palette, you can easily use just a lid, <laughs> um, a plastic lid from, I don't know, a, a um, you know, sour cream container or a Cool Whip container or um, any kind of old plastic lid your mom might possibly have laying around the kitchen. Um, anyway, you can just kind of imagine that your paintbrush is like your your pencil um, when you're drawing. So I'm just kind of doing the shape of petals. I'm gonna do this one kind of 
in the traditional or you know the shape layout of the petals that we did in that original drawing but I'm going to go off the edge of the canvas here so I'm just getting the basic shape And I'm blending a couple different colors of blue together. So I have some light blue and I have some of that darker, more like cobalt blue on my brush at the same time. And I'm just kind of free forming Freeform painting. Here I'm adding some purple. And I'm just going to have some fun filling in. Now I have some white on my palette too, so I can add some white if I want to make it, um, make some highlights on there. Just kind of have fun with it. I mean, painting is meant to be fun and experimental. <laughs> well, sounds like I'm getting a call. That's okay. All right. So I'm adding some white there. Some more purple. All right, this person really wants to get a hold of me, I guess. All right, here's some more of that darker purple. So I'm gonna put this on fast forward and you can kind of see how I continue painting this iris. So hopefully you noticed that I'm using quite a few different colors in here and you've also noticed that maybe I've changed my mind a couple times on things. I've gone back over it. Um, you know, again, painting is to be just fun and expressive and experimental at times. So um, here I decided that I needed the edges. I wanted the edges to be a little bit more wavy like this. So um, I've kind of, whoops, I've kind of gone back and added some um, more wavy lines and I'm lightening things up and I keep, you know, going back and changing certain things. But anyway, I'm not going to complete this entire painting right now, but hopefully that gives you an idea. And uh, I would love to see your paintings when you're done. So hopefully you had fun drawing and possibly even painting uh, some irises. Um, I did want to talk to you a few minutes about your um, projects that you might have already been working on in class the last time we saw each other. So if you are in art studio or you're in art three, um, and you did not yet finish your radiating patterns project. Some of you um, were still working on that in your sketchbook. Uh, I'd love to see those when you're done. I do think that most of you got these finished, but if you haven't, um, please finish these at home if you can. If you have marker and colored pencil, that would be great. Re remember that your patterns are repeating as they radiate out. Um, some of you also were working on complete the face. 
and um, some of you already have your your um, reference pictures in your sketchbook some of you don't um, here's one that I did a couple years back or a few years back um, if you have your picture and you're able to cut it in half and um, glue it into your sketchbook and work on that at home that would be great it will require you to have some B pencils at home. It's really hard to finish that project if all you have is a number two HB pencil. So um, some B pencils like 4B, 6B, some blending tools, those would be really helpful in completing that project. Um, again, I'd love to see them when they're done and hope you guys have a great week.